What's up everyone? Today I got a quick tutorial on creating movement trays for Tabletop Simulator. here I hit this games icon up here go goes to the workshop and at the very top you want to hit browse and the search engine is actually pretty good uh, or pretty bad depending on what your opinion is but um, if you type in 25 millimeter bases you will get anything that says bases in 25 millimeter I particularly look grab this one and the way you grab this guy is you go ahead and click on him and you scroll down and there's a subscribe button when you hit that, when you you know, here I hit subscribe. Um, now, now you'll actually see it in your workshop. So if you go ahead and click, click it out of this, open up games again, you're, and there it is. Now um, I'm going to actually do an, edit, an additive load, and what that does is it brings it to your current workshop. If you just straight out click on the on the workshop, it'll try to load everything. Uh, so let's try this real quick. We do additive load. We say load. Uh, and they're not here, so you'll see that square. What happens is I have this tabletop, uh, you know, board out here, and so they kind of um, are disappeared. And if you highlight them, there, there they are. So what you, what I do typically is hold on to them, and and you'll see them here. But you know, and if you look, you got grass, you got you know dirt, you got ash and gravel, and you got sand. So they got some pretty good selections. You could, you know, and then they got round, and they got big rounds, and they have different sizes here. I don't know if this is 25 or not. So what I'm going to do is actually use one of my my bases. Um, and now I use OpenSCAD. Well, the reason why I like OpenSCAD is it's really good for engineering. It gets you the exact precision. So I know that my bases are exactly 25 millimeters. And I know that you could scale them up or down in Tabletop Simulator, but I'm always kind of questioning um, how accurate those scales are. So here you here you see the space right here. And um, one thing I'm going to do now before I start the tutorial too quickly is I'm gonna I like this guy. Make sure that he's zeroed out when you want his X and Y to be zero. And I'll explain that Y in a second. And two, two represents uh, the height of it. Y is actually Z is kind of counterintuitive. So this is actually two inches off of the, the ground. And this table itself is two inches. So if I put anything lower, it'll disappear into the table. Okay, so now we got this, this, um, this map. And now if we, um, if we look, he's, he's perfectly aligned. Now, what are we gonna do? So now that we got this guy, I, I want to create a two by five, right? Or, or five by two, Re five columns, two ranks. And so for that, I'll do a clone. I'll get one, two, three, four. Okay, oh, that's one too many. So I'll go ahead and delete this guy. Now, um, now that I have this guy here in position, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start lining them all up, okay? And so to get that perfect alignment, um, I'm going to key off of this guy. So now that I got this guy, I'm going to go back to my my measurement here, and I'm going to click this guy. Now the X represents the columns, and the Z represents the rows. So we're going to go to 0.98. Uh, that's about one. Um, it's about one, 25 millimeters over. I'm going to set this to zero and we're going to set oops, this to zero as well. And you'll see it's it's it, it moves itself. So we'll go to the next guy and this guy's going to be uh, 1.96. So it's always subtracting 0.2. We'll set this to zero and there it's lined up. Go to the next guy. 
um, 2.94. Set this to zero. Zero. Okay. And then set this guy here. And we're going to set this to 3.92. Zero. Zero. And they're, they're lined up. So we've got five bases lined up. Okay. Now that it's lined up, we're going to grab, we're going to go to our combine tool and we're going to go to attachment we're going to attach the bases. And this makes it one base from now on. Um, this makes it one base in tabletop simulator. Now, um, and so it moves one at a time. Now I'm going to create one more row so I do control paste. Oops. A bit too close. And then uh, we do our movement all over again. So we come here. So we'll set this to zero, zero. And we come over to this guy, set this guy to zero as well. Come to this guy here. And uh, X, remember, rip is the column. And so we want that to be zero. And we want this to be 0.98 because it's on the second row. And now it lines up. So now we got a perfectly aligned 22 by 5, 25 millimeter bases. Okay. So go back to our attachment tool, go on this guy and attach this guy. And now, and now we actually have, you know, one base uh, that's a two by five. Okay. And so you could, you know, you could kind of do this also, um, like I've, I've noticed that one thing I've noticed about Tabletop Simulator, there's not a lot of good bases for scrimmagers. So what you can actually do here is actually set up a base for scrimmagers as well and set them up, you know, 0.5 millimeters apart from each other or half an inch apart from each other. All right, so now that we have this guys, but we're not done yet. So now we actually, um, you know, want to actually create um, snap points. Now you don't have to, and let me show you real quick, uh, the two models that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this guy right here that has no base. And then I'm going to use this guy here that has a base already on it. Just kind of the different look. Now, <clears throat> as I mentioned, you don't have to put a snap point. You can actually align it. The problem with this is that you have to, um, you're going to have to perfectly align it yourself. Um, What I'm, uh, here, so what I mean here is, without snap points, you're gonna have to perfectly align these guys here, uh, and it's a bit of a hassle uh, to, to align them. Uh, there's a couple, you know, in, you know, I do my trick, but if I do my trick on how to align these guys, you know, and to me it's all all about being able to easily align it. And you might say, well, once it's aligned, what's the big deal? You know, I've noticed that these games sometimes have quirks, and in the middle of a game they'll misalign and um, and now all of a sudden yet you you'll have to spend time in the game to actually set them so you'll see how if I do this it doesn't really align prep uh, very well so you know you'll have to do one at a time so what's what's the workaround to that well what I like to do is uh, you know I personally like to Come over here and, yeah, oops. Set my camera view uh, and then look straight top bottom, scroll in and sna set snap points. Now, for the snap points to work, what you are gonna have to do is you're gonna have to lock the model that you want. If you don't lock it, when you create a snap point, it won't move. And I'll sh let me show you what I mean. Um, so if you don't lock it, and you drop a snap point here, you'll notice how it goes here. Well, it, 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 it goes to the bottom on the, on, the, on the whatever object you have. But if I move the object, go back to snap points, you see the snap point didn't follow. So in order to guarantee that the snap point follows and is relative to the, the base, you have to lock it down. Now when you come here and create snap points, it will follow. You'll see I could place it anywhere I want 
and it doesn't drop to the bottom of the of the you know base. And then if I unlock it and I move it, the snap point follows. Okay. So and and you we'll see the advantage of snap points in a second. So for now, let me go ahead and oops, see. It? And it happens a lot. A lot of times you'll forget to lock it. Okay, so let me zoom in real quick. Now, this isn't too critical. You get it right, right? Um, you want to get as close as possible to the center um, because the collisions will cause them to, to not line up. And then you could always fix it later on if you if you you're slightly skewed or misaligned, or you find a model in particular having a hard time. You can later on modify these snap points. You can see this guy's off. Okay. And now that you're done, uh, you could unlock it. And now you'll see that my snap points followed. Good. Okay, good. So now, what do we do? So if you come over here now and I grab these models, I put, I'm missing one. Let me, for the sake of just having this ready, go ahead and clone these other guys. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and then I'm also going to clone this guy. Okay, so now I grab this guy and I kind of shake him up. And this is one way I find that it's really easy to, to, to base them up or to line them. So once I got them all, you know, I, I highlight them all and just kind of shake them around and they all kind of clunk together. Hit the number two for the number of rows that you want, or not, yeah, and then just drop them in there. And, you, and if you see, uh, they kind of snap into into place. And now, if I grab the bottom base, they all move together, and they're all lined up. Okay, so that's how that's how it looks like, and you can see it kind of looks a bit double stacked. And over here, go ahead and highlight these guys. It definitely looks more than ten. Is one ten. Get out of there. All right, so here we go. Ten. Line them up right here, and there you go. And it kind of snaps down. Has a bit of a different look. Um, so one thing I found is that sometimes, uh, you know, I paint these models myself. So it's kind of nice not to have a base because now it looks more natural if you have a, your own base and design them up. It doesn't look so clunky like this double layer. Okay. And there you, there you have it. Now you have your model to, to push and shove around. You see it's pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. If you have your own tips and tricks, please share them in the comments below. Um, if you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and hit that subscribe for more content to come. Thank you, this is Kelmore signing out.